So I want you to think about yourselves, what your creative needs are. If there's a creative need, there's a use for mid-journey. Now, look at all these things on here. Typically, you know, we use it for just about everything at this point. Email, newsletters, paid and organic media, blog content, website assets, mood boards, YouTube thumbnails, uh, it's very useful. So, breaking down mid-journey, in typical AI fashion, they happen to go and release a major update a week before this presentation. So basically a lot of what I was talking about had to get reworked and uh, that's what you have to expect when you work with AI programs like this. They're gonna be, they're gonna be moving, they're gonna be nimble, so, so, do you, uh, so you have to be too and so does your team. Um, but realistically, the art is in the prompt. That is the most important aspect of mid-journey. Luckily, we've been introduced to the prompt from ChatGPT. So same theory applies here. Clear and direct prompts are gonna equal clear and direct output. Ambiguous prompts are gonna equal ambiguous output. And really what we're looking for here from a marketing standpoint, we want photorealistic assets, like futuristic art, abstract art, that stuff's cool, but like we need to put the stuff in our marketing that's gonna be client facing. So the way to do it is you're gonna use photographic elements if you want photorealistic output. So Midjourney responds to this very well it's been trained on images like this, so let's take a look. Basically, this here on the left, you'll see a little bit of cheat sheet, I left that for you guys, but photorealistic elements, the, these are the things that we wanna talk about. Right? If you were a teacher and you were teaching a class on photography, this is what you teach your students. So you wanna do things like the subject, style and technique, style and technique could be like landscape, portrait, street art, things like that. Mood and atmosphere is gonna definitely shift a lot of what the, uh, what the output looks like. Details modifier, specific cameras, and lenses. This is very important. Um, Midjourney responds to this very well, and it sort of triggers it into a photorealistic mindset. So you always want to have some element of that in there, or else it'll default to like that AI look. I'm sure we're all very used to that by now. Um, apertures, lighting, composition, perspective guidelines. So prompt structure, this is very important. Uh, basically, the way that Midjourney looks at everything is the most important elements are at the beginning of the prompt, and that's how they weight them. The supporting details at the end, those are gonna be really important for just like shape and mold the image, but really like they have this new feature called shorten, and basically it'll take your prompt, analyze it, and, it's, and show you what worked and what didn't. So here, as you can see, like some things are way, weighted way heavier than others are, and that's why when we wanna look at this, the most important things are gonna be weighted in the front. So here's a prompt example. We're gonna use this for the next couple slides. Uh, it's a BMW M3 in the style of matte black, bustling city night, intricate reflections, Dutch angle, 35 millimeter DSLR camera, f1.4 aperture, dramatic light, leading lines, and then at the back end of this, you see there's some codes. Those are basically parameters. If I go into that, I'll be here for six hours with you guys, so we'll, we'll just keep it simple for now. But this is what you can expect from something like that. So, as you can see here, this is all the same prompt. All those same elements were used. I just switched up the order. So in the first uh, image, you see BMW M3. That was the first thing I led with. You have a big, beautiful picture of the car. The details are very focused on the car, and that's what the, that's what the uh, focus of mid-journey was. In two, you have intricate reflections. So intricate reflections, that really gave, showed up on the car and it showed up on the street. So it weighted that heavier, and that's how we can start to control this, right? That's how you know how to like really get what you want out of the program. Bustling city, pulled back a little bit the car, a little bit more focus on the city itself and not just the car. And then in leading lines, if you're not familiar with that technique, it's basically just like a design term for having lines, shapes, objects, like drawing the, uh, the vision of the user to the image that we want them to look at. So as you can see there, you got some lines on the street, you have some lines vertically, so it can handle a lot of complex terms. Now, these are some of the outputs. This is just a random collection from my, uh, from my mid-journey library, but you can see here there's a ton of different things. So you can do lifestyle photos, you can do banners, you can do ads almost. You could do some storyboarding, you can do food and uh, real estate. So there's really no end to what you can do. And it doesn't just stop there. Like for us specifically, we use it for inspiration. Um, my design team, we have, like I said, 2,000 emails per person that have to go out each year, they can't all look the same. They can't all feel the same. The themes can't be the same. The design can't be the same. So we'll use Midjourney to give us some different, uh, to give us some different looks and feels. Even if we're not going to use this stuff verbatim, 
like it's good to pull from something like an email over there. We might like one of the elements or the assets or the way it looks from a color scale perspective. So like there's a ton of things here. You can do landing pages, you can do social media assets, um, and you know, lifestyle photos, product photography, just an insane tool. So how can you systematize prompting? This is where it gets important, you know, when we want to operationalize this. So prompt formulas. This is basically one of the most important aspects of getting this into the operations. Like the goal isn't to create it random every time, the goal is to create a system. So we want these to be clear, digestible, consistent, and replicable. Now, this is a photorealistic prompt. Uh, now, we're just gonna take the elements that we utilized in that last, uh, the last couple images, and we're gonna put it into a prompt formula. So you can see here, we just took everything, put it into a condensed paragraph, separated it by commas, and we have a prompt formula. So we're going to use this again for the, next, uh, for the next slide here. And basically, if you're not comfortable or you don't know these terms, like, you know, I don't know what an aperture is. I didn't until I started doing this. Um, you can either fill those prompt formulas in yourself or you can use ChatGPT. So um, if you, I'm sure a lot of you have used ChatGPT before in the past. This is pretty simple. So this is a two-step process on how to use ChatGPT to prompt at scale. So, Typically, just do this first. We want to ask ChatGPT to learn, because we all know it can short circuit sometimes and get a little bit nuts. Uh, so what we're going to do here is this is a mid-journey prompt formula that we're going to insert the prompt formula and then respond yes if you understand. Typically, ChatGPT will just respond with something that's you know, very simple and yes, I get it. And then the second prompt, we're going to do let's create a number of prompts. So that could be anywhere from however many you want to do. Uh, for subject and detail, so BMW in a bustling city. Uh, use concise visceral language and only use keywords, do not use filler words. We want to get rid of those filler words, they just tend to screw up with the, uh, uh, what Midjourney wants to do, so we want to keep it very concise. Now, why is this important? Because Midjourney gives you four photos per prompt, so you have four options. Um, when you ask ChatGPT to do this, if you do it five times, you ask it for five prompts, now we have 20 images. There's also a cool feature on Midjourney, which is called the repeat parameter, which will allow you to repeat a job or a prompt up to 40 times. So now we've just created 20 images and we can repeat it 40 times. We have 800 outputs, 15 seconds like of prompting. That's all it took. Now in less than an hour, we can have a whole database of images, different styles, different looks, different feels. So this is typically the same process. It's gonna look very familiar of how we build prompt formulas. It's very simple, looks exactly what we've just done. You want to identify the key elements that are important to whatever type of image you're prompting. You're going to organize and structure it like we talked about with the BMW slides. We're going to test it using the shortened feature so we understand what Midjourney likes. And then we're going to operationalize it. We're going to database it, let everyone play with it, iterate on it, and that's how we can all start to utilize this and make it very uh, congruent. So we're going to do something a little bit creative here, push Midjourney's limits and see what happens. So, what we're going to do is going to look at mood boards. Mood boards, if you're not familiar with them, we utilize them for you know, client presentations or just showing different, uh, different thematic ideas that we're thinking of. They're super complex. They take a ton of time. And if you're a designer, you know how crazy it can be to try to put one of these things together. It can take anywhere from six months at some point to get something like very, very intricately designed. So what we're going to do, start with the same process. We're going to look at identifying key elements. We're going to look at some things like theme, concept, style, you know, specific objects and patterns. Obviously, we want the emotion and the purpose in there, uh, some layout options, and some color schemes. So structure, this is how we're going to structure it. We're going to look at, again, putting everything into a condensed paragraph, separating it by, with commas, you know, looking at the hierarchy of everything, how we want this to look and feel, and what we want mid-journey to focus on. So, Quick tip here, if you're going to try this at home, intricate and symmetrical, really good words to start for mood board prompting, just really triggers mid-journey into like that meticulous mindset, and so it knows it's going to be detailed, so the outputs tend to be really good. So here we're going to test and iterate it. As you can see, we ran this through the shorten uh, function on there, and realistically, you look at that, mood board weighted super heavily. Some of the other supporting details are also weighted heavily, thematic elements, things of that nature, and boom, this is what we get. So now we've just basically created something that normally would take six months in about 15 seconds. And some of these outputs, I'll be honest, I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to create this ever, really. So something like that over on the left with the North Face uh, mood board, that could cost a designer, I mean, that 
five, six, seven thousand dollars. So it's a it's a tool that's pretty insane, especially for something that's this intricate. That's really pushing it. So we can actually utilize this for a lot.